We've previously looked at interpreting the DFT, discrete Fourier transform, as a matrix operation. And so in this lecture, we're going to interpret the FFT algorithm in terms of matrices as well. Recall that the FFT, or fast Fourier transform, is a numerically efficient algorithm for computing the DFT. And the DFT can be written as a matrix multiplication, where I'm going to define a vector lowercase x to have the capital N samples of the time series, and then a vector capital X to have the capital N values of the DFT coefficients. With those definitions, I can write that capital X, my DFT coefficients, are given by a matrix W times the vector of time series coefficients. And this matrix W can be expressed as I've shown here, where the elements of this matrix are constants Wn raised to various power. And W sub n is the complex number e to the minus j 2 pi over n. So this is one way to write the DFT. Now the FFT algorithm, it turns out, factors this matrix W into a product of very simple matrices involving a lot of ones and zeros. And because these matrices end up being so simple, the algorithm actually is much more efficient to implement as a product of these simple matrices, in other words, a sequence of steps, rather than implementing it as one matrix multiplication. What the FFT algorithm does is it factors our DFT matrix W into a product of very simple terms. I'm going to illustrate this again using capital N equals 4, and I've sketched an FFT diagram for this case of N equals 4. Recall the first step is that we have to rearrange the order of the input. So this is a power of 2 decimation in time FFT algorithm. So there's other versions, and they just amount to different factorizations of this matrix W. So one of the things we're going to do is collect the values at different stages of this process into vectors. So we have our vector of time signal, lowercase x, and then we're going to take the, the bit-reversed version of the time signal and put that into a vector v, so that has elements v1, v2, v3, and v4. Then after this first stage of butterflies, we're going to call those values a vector u. And then finally, we have another stage of butterflies. Since this is n equals 4, there's only log base 2 of 4, or two stages in this FFT algorithm. And at the output of the second stage, we have the DFT coefficients, which we'll call capital X. Now we're going to start on the right-hand side with capital X, and we can represent capital X as a matrix B sub 2 times U. This diagram here, these butterflies, just involve additions and multiplications. And so if I write capital X as B2 times U, it turns out that B2 takes the form 1 times U1 plus 0 times U2 plus W40 times U3, that's going to give me X0 here. And then X1, I'm going to get by taking 0 times U1 plus 1 times U2, this branch, plus W4 raised to the first power times U4. So that's this element right here. And similarly, we can look at X2 and X3, and we see that we have a fairly sparse matrix that has a number of very simple entries, particularly these ones, and that represents these butterflies in this final stage here. Similarly, if we look at how U is expressed in terms of V, these butterflies are also represented by a matrix B1. In particular, we have that U1 is equal to V1 plus V2 or I can write this as w4 raised to the 0th power, this 1. So I've got 1 times v1 plus w4 to the 0 power times v2. And then u2 is 1 times v1 plus w4 squared times v2. 
And then we have the same sort of thing between U3 and U4 here. You notice that these two, U1 and U2, are do decoupled from U3 and U4, as we have shown in the diagram here. And then finally, this step of doing bit reversal, where we reorder the time series values, the x's, can be thought of as a matrix operation too. The particular matrix we're going to call P. And so V can be written as P times X. And P is a permutation matrix because all it does is permute the order of X. And I've written out the specific matrix in this case here. But in general, for higher orders of N, this is just a matrix where each row has a 1 in the appropriate position that reflects how that value of x is permuted or moved somewhere else. So we see that v is equal to p times x. And when we put this all together, we saw we said initially that the DFT represented capital X, the DFT coefficients, as a matrix W times the time series vector x. And if I go through this process that I've indicated up here with each step, I've got Px, which was V, and then B1 times Px, which is B1 times V, or U. And then finally, I've got B2 times U, or B2 times B1 times P times X. So we conclude that our W, our DFT matrix, is a factorization. It can be factored as B1 times B2 times P, where P is the permutation matrix, and these B1 and B2 represent the operations of these butterflies. And these matrices have a lot of zeros in them and quite a few elements involving one. And this is one of the reasons why this is so computationally efficient. So in general, when we have a power of two algorithm, and again, this is decimation in time, we have that W can be factored as a product from 1 to log 2 to the n, that's log 2 of n stages, of butterflies, and then a permutation operator that does the bit reversal. Each of these butterfly matrices, it turns out, only has capital N entries that are not 0 or 1. So in this case, you see that B2 has four entries that are not unity or zero, and so does B1, only has four entries possibly that are not zero or one. There's actually fewer because W4 to the zero is one, and as uh, we would have a one here, and a one here, and a one here. At any rate, each of these butterfly matrices has only capital N, non unity or non zero elements, so when I multiply, this butterfly times the vector at its input, I end up requiring only n operations to implement this matrix. So since each of these matrices requires capital N multiplications, we can see that I have a total of n multiplications over log 2 to the n stages, and it gives me a total computation of n log 2 to the n complex multiplies. In contrast, if I just implement this matrix W directly, it's a full matrix and in general has capital N squared entries. So when I multiply this times a vector, it takes on the order of N squared operations. So the full DFT implemented just by multiplying W is order N squared. But when I factor W in this manner, then the number of operations becomes n log 2 of n. And of course, the permutation matrix P is all ones and zeros, so that's just rearranging the order of things, and it doesn't require any multiplications. So these matrix concepts are very, very useful and a powerful tool in signal processing.